This is Corolla Digital. Hello, my little Twizzlers. It's me, Allison Rosen. Uh, this is the very exciting second part of the two-part episode with Christina Pashitsky. Uh, and I know that she says it's Pashitsky, but I'm tiny bit I'm wondering if it's more like Pashitsky. Christina, which is it? Anyway, uh, I think you'll enjoy this. But first, I have to tell you, I have uh, very exciting news, exciting and, and timely news, considering the fact that we mention it in this episode. Uh, the live episode of Allison Rosen is Your New Best Friend that we recorded at LA Podcast Festival with Doug Benson and Greg Proops is live in the iTunes store for $1.99. You can go get that now. It's been quite an odyssey to get to this point. It's um, been live for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that joke will um, will make sense once you get to the end of this episode. Time is folding in on itself. It is um, sort of, what you need is a wrinkle in time. That's just a shout out to uh, Madeline Langle. I, uh, I don't know how to say that name either. Anyway, uh, we have a clip from the uh, live podcast at the PodFest which we're going to play for you to entice your eardrums and your fingers, just to entice your whole being. And then I'm going to get right back into the microphone, and then you're going to hear the episode. I just want you, I want to break it down completely. That's how this is going to go. Okay, here's the clip. Please love it. You should dedicate, oh, it's not your book, but they should have dedicated the book to Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was an old man who loved, loved farts. I think they buried him with his fart machine. I, I'm almost certain they did. <laughs> no, not his own asshole. I mean... <laughs> no, I mean it. Like Bella Lugosi was buried in the Dracula costume, Leslie Nielsen was buried with his fart machine. I've requested that I be buried with a, you know, a small wooden implement of indeterminate origin. <laughs> Like some kind of totem? More of a spoon, really. I think it's more useful. I mean, the afterworld, you're not going to find a totem as useful as a spoon. I think in the afterworld, they're going to be like, yogurt? And I'm going to be like, right on, because I'll have my spoon. You've got to have my wooden spoon. If I have a talisman, I'm like warding off the yogurt and whatnot. And I think you're going to be... In the afterworld, you're going to need... Or afterworld, if you wish to pronounce all the consonants in it. I... have that kind of time. I don't either. Mm-mm. Let's move. I hate yogurt when there's no spoons. Isn't it awful? It's so weird eating it with your hands. It's still delicious, though. <laughs> Difficult to improvise yogurt. Difficult to improvise. Eating it. I mean, if you don't have a spoon, you're really up yogurt creek without a kefir. Uh, you're... <laughs> There's no way you want to stick your hands into it, really. It's not even... Even ice cream, I think you could narf out of the bucket, you know? <laughs> oh, I could totally narf it out of the bucket. <laughs> and I thought he said marf, but that also works. Uh, yeah, I didn't know what he said, but I'll do it. <laughs> if ice cream is involved. I mean, seriously, what are things you wouldn't do with ice cream? Oh, that's good. What are things... I would not take it into a shower with me. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Because God it damn wet. it! Ice it cream in the wet. shower will stand the right way. <laughs> How big of a shower? Right. What do you mean, like shit? You you're never. Right. You're right. I should be shielding the ice cream with my body. Right? That's what you're saying. I'm just saying that. Or does this have to do with the direction of the shower? Have nozzle? you showered with a man? With a man? Did a, you say a man a or an man. ice cream man? <laughs> have you showered with an ice cream man? I have. Yes. <laughs> And he was not that good humored, I'll be honest. Hi, it's me again. Well, here's the funny thing about that funny thing. He said, Doug said ice cream in the shower will stand the right way. I think meaning the carton would stand up if you set it down. But I took it to mean, well, stand the right way, which is what I was saying. Gary's nodding a lot. That's what you think? It, upon hearing it again, I thought he was saying ice cream is the one food that will stand the right way in the shower. No, he was... I, I, I've heard this clip several times, and I always took it as, well, stand the right way with your back to the water so that yeah. you're eating the cone and it's not getting wet or the bowl, whatever. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I thought. But then yeah. upon hearing it again, I doubted that. I no, doubted I, myself for nothing. I have an no, you're, you're, you're overthinking it. All right. You guys, I want to know what you think. 
I've got to know. All right. Anyway, here's the episode with Christina. Uh, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Allison, Rosen, Allison, Rosen is your new best friend. Allison, Allison, with perfect good times never end. Allison, Rosen, do you hear the way we dance and dance again? Allison, Rosen, Allison's your new best friend. Are there certain people in their life, like who are in their inner circle, who who they admit their vulnerability to, or do they mm. not even admit it to they themselves? They don't know it themselves, I think. So they're just megalomaniacs. Well, because I, well, no. Here's the thing: not all not all people that don't can't admit their flaws are megalomaniacs. They they can also be deeply ashamed of those yeah. flaws. Because my mother criticized everything about me growing up. So I learned that weaknesses or vulnerabilities were a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started to hide it. Oh, I'm not ashamed. So it gets layered with shame. Right. And until you can go like, oh, having a weakness or a vulnerability, it isn't a bad thing. It's just on the spectrum of who I am. Then you're so much happier for it. But that's such a great service because I I think especially in the podcast world, it's so dude heavy. And Mm -hmm. dudes don't relate by sharing feelings. Sometimes they just relate by telling stories. Yeah. And you're like, I wish I could hear a podcast where like people just share their feelings about shit. (laughs) Yeah. You know? So what's your husband like? Oh, he's great. He's a balance of both of those worlds. Like. But it takes a little training. You have to train a dude, <laughs> I think, to be vulnerable with you. Because mm-hmm. I think men are so um, socialized to be like hard asses and tough guys. Um, but my husband's very conscious and very, I don't want to say he's not emotional, but he's he'll tell me stuff that he's thinking and feeling, which is awesome. And then we have a good marriage uh, that way. What was the question now about him? Yeah, well, it was what's what's he? Because oh, you were saying awesome. that dudes yeah. bond by telling stories. Oh, right. So he, but he knows he can't do that with me. If we mm-hmm. go out to fucking dinner and he's telling me about every, I'm like, I, I, he can see me drifting. Like, no, no, tell me how you feel about yeah. something because that's really more important to me. Uh, but he's a pig. He's a pig animal beast. He's a bear. He's a big hairy beast of an animal. I love him. Are you guys gonna have kids? Yeah, you know, man, I'm fucking. I'll talk to you about that. I'm. I'm kind of freaked out about that because, like, I'm 36, okay, and uh, TikTok, right? <laughs> yes. But I also – I'm at this point in my career where, like, I'm I'm headlining, like – I'm headlining clubs. I'm one of the handful of women in this business that actually are doing that, and it's so special and amazing. And I'm afraid to slow down. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid to take that time out. And everyone tells me, like, the, like Bert, who's my friend, oh, Christina – he always call, he calls me push. He's like push. You have to have a kid. Uh, uh, you can do everything, and you're just you're gonna learn and grow in different ways. And it's so creative, so cool. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> you do the road. Like your wife stays home with your kids, dumbass, and you're the one that gets to be free. Wait, who, who is this person then? If he's a performer, who well, Bert? Oh, Bert says. Oh, this. Bert Kreischer oh, says oh, this. Yeah, the I Kreischer says who yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, push. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> uh, so I, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've on, and if we're going to be real, I think that women take the hit. Like, when yeah, you yeah. have a baby, like, you're the one that has to stay home and take care of it and stuff. And Well, I'm worried that I will lose ambition career-wise <sighs> if I have a kid and all I want to do. And all of a sudden, my focus will shift and it'll just be like, oh, no, this is the entire reason I'm here is to do this mom thing. <sighs> no. Not mom in the, you know, know. mom jeans way. But, um, <laughs> and that... I think an even worse fate, though, would be if that didn't happen and I was like, oh, great. Now I'm stuck oh. here and I can't be um, podcasting. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'll be doing at that point, which right. actually is probably not too far but away. But then, okay, so, so there's that paranoid and fear-based thought of like, oh, my career will suffer yeah. if I have a kid. And then there's the other thought that's fear-based and awful of what if I don't have a kid and how yeah. awful will I feel when I'm, you know, down the road and I didn't do this wonderful thing that everybody tells me is, like, the most right. amazing thing ever. Right. And, you know, at our age, I think we're automatically high risk. Ah, shit. I know. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Would you have Would you have a special kid? I mean... Would you Sarah Palin it? Assuming that... Wait, did she know ahead of time? 
Oh, God, yeah, that's so know. hard. That's so hard to say. Do you think, I, did she take the tests and stuff? Oh, she's probably, she's wackadoo enough where she'd be like, I don't believe in science and logic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs reason? Yeah. Right. I, she has a religion. I don't know. I mean, it depends at what point I found out, I suppose. God, I, uh, <sighs> oh, it's so that's, terrible. I don't, yeah, I don't, like, probably I, shouldn't I, ask I don't you that wanna... on your podcast, huh? <laughs> Well, okay, honestly, if we're being fully honest, I feel yeah. I feel like if I say anything other than of course I would, that makes me some kind of monster in the eyes of people listening. Oh, yeah, of course. You know. Um and I probably I probably would because I don't think I could bring myself not to. Oh, this you is know? terrible. I want to talk about yeah. this now. Sorry, Thanks I hate lot. that I even brought it Jeez. up. Let's talk about cancer and rape next. Okay. Wah, wah. Well, no, let's talk about the fact that Roseanne Barr, <gasps> see, I wrote this down. Roseanne Barr oh, said, so you had her on your recent presidential your mom's house. bonus episode. <laughs> election yeah. bonus, bonus election it episode. Dropped, it dropped late last night. Yeah. We did a bonus episode just for her because no, she we, did our podcast. And we should say, as we're recording this, tomorrow is election day. By the time this right. comes out, Oh, is this coming out tomorrow? No. Oh, right. By the time really this months. comes out, we will ha- we will know who it is. Who do you think it's going to be? Oh my God! Can I can I say who I hope it's going to yeah. be? I mean, look, I love Roseanne, and I think she's as competent as anybody else. But it's so hard to get voted as an independent. Right. The what party is she running with? Peace and Freedom. Mm. Hey, man, I voted for Ralph Nader back in what was it like oh two or whatever. Uh, but I I hope it's Obama. Me too. What do you do? You think Romney's going to do it? Shit. I don't know. I Ugh. I remember. I I really don't know what to think. I feel like I've experienced elections before where I've gone into it thinking, oh, it's going to be so and so, and then that had that sort of like, oh, it's not going that way. Like I'm still I'm still stung from the whole Gore Bush thing. Wow. Uh so I don't know. I think it's going to be Obama, but I, I think there's so. a chance it won't be. I don't I know. know. I is. Yeah. So Roseanne said, give yourself permission to step over the line. Yeah. And I love that because I, I don't her. I don't necessarily. She was just talking about you guys were talking about like how most of entertainment today is Blows. bullshit. Yeah, yeah, she goes. And you were kind you of to hesitant to say it. Well, you got to – okay, she's episode 83, by the way, if you guys want to go to your mom's house and check her out. Um, yeah, Roseanne, she goes – no, because I was like, don't you feel like – like what I was kind of saying to you about the Pinterest thing, that I feel like the culture is fostering, at least for women, I can only speak on that, a lot of fucking bullshit mm-hmm. of just <coughs> – excuse me, superficial. Why are we paying attention to the Kardashians? Because it's profitable. Because E! knows or whatever. Is it E! channel? Yeah. That women are watching it, and that's the only reason they do it. It's not the patriarchy keeping us down. It's women keeping us down. <laughs> yeah. And so she goes, uh, she goes, yeah, it's a lot of bullshit. Everything's bullshit. Like, she's so awesome. Yeah. Um, nobody talks like that anymore. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm choking. <laughs> uh, do you think that I wish she... everybody talked like her. But did she play it a lot closer to the vest when her show was on? When she was on the sh- no, I think she had to. Yeah, I think what you're see. Okay, I, yeah. I'm very torn yeah. about whether to step over the line or not, because part of me is like, yeah, step over the line. Course, now. Just, what are you referring to? Um, I think I hold if, things that I want to say that I know that will uh, be polarizing. I probably oh. steer away from. Because I just don't want to deal with all the negativity that's going to come at me, even though it already does. Like I'm, yeah. I'm. You're going to be hated no matter what. Yes, <coughs> but like, I was, do you know Chrissy Teigen? Do you know who that is? Uh, of Teigen and Sarah? No, oh, but okay. I love them. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, she's John Legend's fiance, and she's a model, and okay. she, um, she tweets, but she'll just be like. Like, if someone says something to her, she'll just be like, like, you know, blah, 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 imbecile or fuck you fucking moron or whatever. And she is very outspoken in favor of Obama. Mm-hmm. And I am not outspoken really about anything political. Well, I mean, I am in that everyone knows that I'm liberal and that I'm pro-Obama, but I don't tweet about it a lot. And right. But I'll see something on, you know, that'll piss me off and I'll want to say something, but I don't because I just, I don't. I don't know. I just want, don't so want to put crazy. it out there that much. Right. No, I was just having this discussion <clears throat> with my husband because that conversation with Roseanne, 
actually prompted me to start thinking about my stand up and what I'm doing mm -hmm. and the importance of crossing a line or getting right up. She refers to it actually as getting up right on the edge of the line. Mm -hmm. And her show was at the edge of the line. So if you look at the values of Roseanne, it's very working class. She was extremely pro working class. She had good Jewish mom values, even though she doesn't say she's a, she's obviously not Jewish as a mother on the show. Right. Um, and it's about like middle class values. And I think that you can't worry about what people are going to think about you all the time. Right. And I, listen, man, I, and if I didn't struggle with that, I, my therapist would <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have to go to the therapist. I think I, I think everybody struggles with that. To some, even comedians, we pretend like oh, I don't care what people. If you don't think, if you don't care what people think about you, you're a fucking sociopath. Yes, uh, you have to care a little bit. And comedians, particularly, we just want to be liked. Mm -hmm. But then the other side of that is like you got to have an opinion. You got to stand for something. And you know what you stand for deep right. down inside. It's just a matter of like, do you have the balls or the ovaries to fucking say it? And that's the challenge of life. I think that's the biggest challenge of all, to weed out the people. You're going to lose some people maybe who don't agree with you, but then you're going to gain a whole bunch of people that really do agree with you. Right. And that's the that's beauty the benefit of, that. of of being outspoken in that yeah, way. Man. But then again, I don't know. I guess I have to figure out for me, like, well, how important are politics really to me that I want to make right. that the, the, the thing that's going to push people away? I mean, if someone... It, in certain respects, of course, it is Im important to me. And if people like, you know, on Facebook, if people are writing shit that just drives me crazy, which a lot of people do, I hate it. Uh, yeah. You know, I've just started unfriending them. So I'm like, I don't want to be seeing all this in my timeline. Yeah. Like, like guy who posted a photo of Obama and a chimp. Oh, <laughs> we're my not God, friends dude. anymore. Not that we ever were truly friends. But, you know, because I used to do um, and I still do when I go to New York, the show Red Eye. Oh, and, yeah, I've seen that. that yeah, yeah, it's a total East Coast comic thing, yeah. It is, but it's on Fox News. Yeah, yeah So, like, yeah. I have a lot of, around then, I, you know, sort of picked up a lot of conservative followers. Oh, so, weird, how weird. Mm -hmm. That's so funny, because I didn't, I didn't think any conservatives listened to podcasts. I don't know they why, do. I just think oh, everybody yeah. is oh, like, Adam's like me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, no, I I'm mean, narcissistic. Ad Adam has a lot of conservative fans. I can see that because I like Adam a lot in that he's old school dude. And he grew up in the Valley, too, like me. Mm -hmm. So every time he talks about the Valley, I'm like, oh, I totally get that. But he stands for like old school American values. And who doesn't like that, dude? Even if you're I mean, even if you're I'm liberal and I like for what I like what he says a lot about stuff. You know, some right. stuff. I don't want to fucking tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Oh, wait, I'm trying to think if, it, if I need to. So were you intimidated talking to Roseanne at all, though? I know that um, you knew her growing up, right? Your best yeah, friend is yeah. her daughter. Well, how did, did you know you that? Did that. I say that? Yeah, you did. On my podcast? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, I did. Yeah. Sorry. Later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I met um, I met her daughter, Jenny, uh, we, at Portola. She was my one friend at Portola Junior <laughs> High. Uh, and we sat in homeroom next to each other. And... Uh, and she was this like awesome <laughs> she was this chunky girl and i was a very skinny nerdy girl and i i had on uh, a hungarian folk vest that my parents dressed me in and i just was fucking tortured there and she and i became really quick friends and i didn't know at, at the time her mother hadn't really broken mm -hmm. and and i watched it it was kind of fucked up for her because I think I watched it when her mother did break, how she was treated at school and how people kind of, you know, it's different when you're famous. You, everyone thinks it's awesome. I don't know. I don't know if everyone thinks, but I think the reality think of it. everyone thinks it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it, the reality of it is quite awful. I mean, you have a reporters in your underwear drawer and, and I don't know. I really, I have a, I, I, I didn't admit to knowing them for many years just because I was so protective. I mm. But just recently, when Roseanne was running, I was like, "Okay, well, maybe I can, I'll, <laughs> I'll have her on the show to help her, and in that way, reveal this thing because I never wanted it to be a part of who I was. I didn't want to like, I don't know, use it as something or right. make it, you know. Yeah, I'm very protective of them. I love that family very much, and I they definitely influenced me. I mean, I spent a lot of time with that family, and definitely they turned me. In, on the comedy. I mean, mm -hmm. I hated, like I said, I hated my house growing up. I lived with my mom and uh, I didn't like being there. 
and her dad, uh, Jenny's dad, would come pick me up, take me to their house. We lived in the same part of the valley. And I would spend entire weekends at that house just like just laughing and being being way freer at their house than I was in my house. I mean, her dad was – her dad's the funniest fucking – I mean, so was Roseanne, obviously, but she was – she was in and out. We spent a lot more time with her dad. I mean, yeah. her dad is still like the funniest human being. He used to we used to drive around the valley and he would put like a fake leg out the door of the car. <laughs> like shit like that. When you're twelve years old, you're like, Oh my god, this is the Yeah. This is a, you can do this as a grown up like Right. Like the silliness. The, yeah. The, you can still liberated. be a loser like a fucking lunatic and, and be a grown up and I just they they blew my mind. That family just blew my mind and they're such good people and they still are like amazingly good people. Are you still friends with her? Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But she lives in Hawaii right now, so I don't get to see her as much as I want. So when did your parents split? Oh, when I was four. Yeah, my parents escaped from Hungary together, and they moved. What year did they come over? Oh, uh, shit. 69. They escaped in 69. Like, escaped. Like, under barbed wire fences. And wow. <laughs> I know. It's so hardcore. And, uh... They went. They ended up in uh, actually in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, across from Detroit or Detroit, if you're French. And my dad worked okay, at the Chrysler wait, this factory. This is going to reveal my lack of um, <laughs> of uh, history and geopolitics. But what was going on in Hungary at that time that they had to escape? Oh, god damn! What wasn't so? So uh, World War II happens. The Germans fuck everything up, and then the Russians come and fuck everything up. Basically, they take over uh, the. The Iron Curtain mm-hmm. separates Europe into East and West. And so oh, okay. the Russians take over Hungary, Yugoslavia, I believe. Uh, I don't know if the Romanians got screwed, but everywhere they uh, they took over. Right, okay. So you had to learn Russian in, in the schools, and they made you join the military. So my father joined the Hungarian uh, military by force when he was like 19 and hated it, just hated it. You couldn't practice your religion. Uh, the KGB or whoever, the Russians would come and take your neighbors away in the middle of the night. Jesus. It was a terrible regime. Yeah. So they were like, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> and then I was born in Canada, and uh, and then we moved to L.A. in 1980. But I love, I like, I so respect my parents for that and that hard knocks mm-hmm. approach. Like, when I hear people complaining about this economy, like, oh, I can only buy, like, one iPad. And you're like, yeah, I know, I get it. You know what? It's not perfect. But it ain't communism bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it ain't World War Two bad. Did and they leave family back there? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So when you escape, you like can't. How old were they when they did that? Like 19 and 20. Jeez. Yeah, because when you escape uh, a communist regime, you can't be like, hey, guys, I'm leaving on right. Tuesday. <laughs> Forward all my mail to Canada. Yeah. Like, it doesn't, you can't tell anybody what you're doing. Yeah. So it was my dad and my uncle and my mother, and they, the three of them escaped and they ended up, they went through Yugoslavia, they got caught in Yugoslavia, they got put in jail, oh, no. they got out, they got put, uh, eventually they made their way to Italy, they stayed in a camp in Italy for a year, and then the Catholic Church sponsored them to go to Canada. And we're, we're way patriotic, my family is more patriotic, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> than most Americans. I love this country, and I say that in my act on stage, and I think people think I'm bullshitting, but, like, I love America so much just because of the bullshit we had to go through to be here. And Yeah. Were they scared when they got here, or was it kind of like, once you're here, you're fine? I think I think uh, my parents were scared when they landed in Canada because they didn't speak the language. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had to learn. When I was born, we all learned English together. Like, I was, like, a little kid reading books, and my mom would read with me, and we learned English together. Um I think once they got to the U.S., my dad relaxed. My mother, I don't think she's ever relaxed. Yeah. I think she still harbored, like, she carries that old, (laughs) like, she still, she still keeps, like, like, if I pay, I paid off my student loan, she's like, you have to keep the documents in case the bank asks them. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I do anymore. (laughs) Right. It's all digital. Like, they can fucking, I don't know. Yeah. That's so interesting. See, my mom, my mom's mom came over from Vienna. Oh, Okay. Um, and the rest of her Hitler's family. birthplace. They never bombed it. That's why it's so nice. <laughs> I've actually I've never been there. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, yeah, my my family has been there, but I I have not. But um, yeah, she came over, and but the rest of her family, like she came over and I think had raised enough money or something to get the rest of her family over, and then she got the letters saying that they, you know, had died. Like, oh. they had died in the, in the camps and stuff. Um, so she escaped, but she came over from, from Vienna, and I think that 
my mom still harbors maybe some of that fear. Like it sounds yes. like your mom. I mean, not not my mom is not at all stern or imposing. Like she's very um she's she she's kind of a a soft person or or like a I don't know, she's not yeah, I guess she's not imposing, but that that fear and that anxiety and and that oh, lack yeah. of being able to relax, I can never totally, relax. like that's how my mom is no, too. No, my dad is like, he's cool. He gets it. <clears throat> the we're in a new country and a new world. I don't think she will ever truly relax into yeah. this society. And quite honestly, because I grew up with that anxiety, I didn't relax until about a uh, few months ago. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Like I, you, you grow up with that mentality, the mm-hmm. survival. Yes. Like I've been in survival mode since like I was 12, dude. I just remember being 12 years old and being like, I'm alone in the world. <laughs> and I started smoking cigarettes. At and 12? Absolutely. Wow. I was like, oh, I'm the only one I can depend on. And I was a child. <laughs> so I was very like in, in survival mode mm-hmm. through college, through my 20s. That's why I became a comic. Like it's the hardest, craziest thing you can do. And the travel of it, the hustle of it. There's something about being displaced constantly yeah. that feels okay. <laughs> um, you know? Do you have – what kind of relationship do you have with your mom now? I don't. Not, I don't. None. I can't even. Mm-hmm. Just because she's uh, – I think she's pretty gone too. And like, okay, here's – like I, I only share this too if I can help other people who have parents that are – I mean, what was I watching on TV? Anyway, sometimes your parents aren't going to approve of you no matter what you do. They're not going to give you the approval you want. And sometimes it's not their fault. They're so traumatized or they're so wonky in their heads. So I don't, I don't blame her anymore. But I, it, it, it's too toxic to have mm-hmm. a relationship with her, unfortunately. Right now, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> she could be – I don't know. I don't think it will change. It's not going to change. So you have to accept and move on. Yeah. She's in a, she's in a different place. She's got her own issues. And I, I, I think she's battling with some serious, like – <clears throat> mental illness problems right now so mm. i know it's kind of a bummer but you know it's i think it's what uh it's it is what it is it's why i'm a comic so <laughs> did she act but does she actually like not approve of what you're doing in oh, your life no it's not or you just mean the the approval that we all like the wanting to be cherished by your parents absolutely it's the wanting uh like my dad does it my dad will be like i'm proud of you and you're mm. like yeah man that's all i wanted but I don't think my mom has that in her. Like, okay, I, I, I got a, a writing gig on Chelsea Lately, like, a couple of years ago. And I call my mom. Like, you get a writing job on Chelsea Lately as a comic. It's pretty big for you. You're like, this is it. This is my big, you know, break. And I, I called her up. And I was like, Mom, I got this thing. And she was like, well, you know, you can always look for something better. And Jeez. <laughs> What? Oh I'm my like, God. no, there's nothing better right now. Listen, yeah, it was so funny. Jerry Seinfeld said the same thing. Like he won this award, like comedian of the century or something. And his mom was like, "Well, I mean, they had to pick somebody." Oh, <laughs> are your parents approving? Mm, yes, they are. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, they don't pull that kind of shit. They don't. No. Do, they don't do that thing with the the career stuff. Um. But in general, I just I, I don't know if it's almost like accidentally, although there are certain things that my mom has said where I'm just like, how, how did this just happen? But it's in general, the, the message, though, is don't ever relax and feel secure. Oh, yeah. No, you know, <laughs> but I do think they are proud of me. So so well, I have that. Good. which I'm, I'm fortunate. Yeah. For. I mean, look, I don't think my mom's a bad person, like I said, and I don't think it's her fault. I think it's the card she was dealt mm-hmm. back in the old country. <clears throat> coupled with legitimate problems in her head and like uh you know what can you do it's been it's been a battle like if your parents are mentally ill you have someone in your family like it's a real pisser and i've been in therapy and unfortunately they don't deal with it you do (laughs) it screws up your life so just fix yourself if you got someone in your family that you're close to and they got problems go work on yourself Mm because you're not going to change them man that's such a hard thing to accept it's so true that you're not going to change your parents i think that's the hardest lesson yeah as a grown-up to accept yeah it's never going to be what you want it to be it is it is how it is and you just got to go forward it almost it creates a deadness inside thinking (laughs) about it you know which i think is what being a grown-up is kind of but just yeah just just to really i mean i think the a goal is to see 
things and people as they truly are. Yeah, yeah. Not as what you want it to be. And, and to I not, struggle with that. And to not judge it and go, yeah. you know, that's it is what it is. Do I wish my mom was this wonderful, uh, you know, what, June Cleaver? Is that her name? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. she baked cookies for me every day and was there when I got home from school and told me I was the best. Yeah, of course. But... But you know what? I did get an awesome dad Mm -hmm. who's super cool to me. And I had a great stepmother and I had a stepfather and I got three stepsisters later and friends like Jenny. And that family is surrogates and my friend Sean and her family. So like you, you know, you build your world Mm -hmm. consciously. The older you get, you surround yourself with better people. Um, So how long were you a writer on Chelsea lately or are you still or? (laughs) That's a really good question. I was only a writer. I did the round table for like. A year and a half, a year and some change. You appeared on it or you were writing? No, just as a a roundtable regular. Mm -hmm. And then um, Jen Kirkman left. And then um, they brought me on to replace her. And um, I mean, look, I didn't really last that long. (laughs) It wasn't really for me. Like, I just wasn't very, I didn't mesh with that culture. It's a very specific culture, that show. Mm-hmm. And I just did not fit in there. Um, so, yeah, I didn't last very long. What, it, can, can you describe what the specific culture is? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so um, picture like you're in high school, okay? <laughs> and um, <clears throat> there's like the group of girls who they hang out with the football players and maybe like, they're like the cool kids, and mm-hmm. then you are like a goth, and mm-hmm. you hang out by the racquetball courts and smoke cigarettes and, like, talk about the cure or whatever. And the popular kids talk shit and, like, oh. I just – I didn't ma- mesh with that world. So you felt like you didn't like, fit in. Yeah. I, it, I wasn't a good match for that show. Like, it's just – it's different. Mm-hmm. Like, I found myself hanging out. With the like the um the security guys a lot, <laughs> like the the Latin security guards, uh-huh. like because they were they kept it real with me and I I enjoyed that. It seems mm. perhaps not the most nurturing environment. <laughs> That's right? one way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit of that. I mean, look, the show's hugely successful, mm-hmm. and like. I respect anybody that makes it as huge as Chelsea Handler has and everybody like it's awesome it's great but it it, it wasn't a good fit for me or my well-being. I mm-hmm. would just like <clears throat> it was one of those gigs where like I'd get in my car at the end of the day and be like if this is one of the coolest jobs in showbiz like why am I so miserable? Yeah. Why do I feel so like why am I sad? And um so yeah, I didn't uh it didn't work out for me there. But hey, like, it prompted me to get on the road. Yeah, it sounds like it was a, a a good experience ultimately because it was a bad experience. It was the best thing. It was the best experience because you know when you're, you sometimes you got to do what's wrong mm-hmm. before you figure out what's right. Yes, you got to you do a lot of wrong shit and you're like, ah, oh, this feels terrible. Why does this feel bad? And then you find who you are in that process. So I just I know what I'm who I am and what I'm good at now, and and it's because of that show. Mm-hmm. It prompted me to become a better stand-up and to become a headliner and and be better at that. So that's what I'm focused on. Well, I think it's time to do some Just Me or Everyone. Oh, yay. Perfect. Sometimes I ponder <laughs> on something I have thought or done. Is it just me or everyone? All right. It's all in your head, says, I turn my ceiling fan fr- uh, to low from a fear of being decapitated in my sleep to then wake up sweating to death. I have never thought about the fan breaking free of the ceiling and falling <laughs> and decapitating me. But now I will, except that, that we, we have a ceiling fan, but it's not in the bedroom. So, uh, yeah, but that... Yeah, I've never thought about that. So that would be just him. That's just him. Well, I don't. I don't like ceiling fans. How come? I don't like the the wind on my face when I'm sleeping. Oh, that has come up on the Adam Carolla show. <laughs> this whole because I, like I, I do like to sleep with a fan pointing at me. It's just not a ceiling fan. I like that. You like the wind on you? Yeah, and, and Adam does, it. but his wife does not like it at my all. My husband loves it, and I hate it. It makes me crazy. Yeah, I think it's it's. Uh, 
it's masculine of me, I suppose. So I just like okay. the wind on my balls. What can I say? You know? <laughs> uh, That's just you then. All right. Elgato is Mio. Um, does that mean the cat is me? Just me or everyone, I smell bath wash before buying it. And yeah. when I squeeze it to take a whiff, some of it usually jizzes onto my <laughs> nose. Uh, yes, and Absolutely. I hate that if it's some kind of oily product because then I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to get – I'm going to get – because my skin, if I put lo- – like if I were to put a blob of lotion on my nose, <laughs> it would make me break out. So I'm always worried about o- moisturizing or oily products making me break out because I smelled them. I smell I smell everything before I buy. You have to. I like, Yes. Yeah, sometimes I'll smell deodorant and then I feel just weird – like if I'm in a store trying to smell the deodorant, because well, you like, have to take that yes, protective sheath off, exactly, and then you look like you're stealing. I worked with someone who kept that protective sheath on her <gasps> little thing of deodorant, and I thought that's weird. It's not okay. I, yeah, that's I don't like. Gesture. What is it like a some some kind of thing to save the shape? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> it does not save the shape, does it? I don't know. If I you mash it, keep it. <laughs> you'd have to mush it's a deodorant it in there. scoop. It's a deodorant mold. I don't know. She was very weird. Oh, and Jesus. she was weird with it. Down to her deodorant, she was weird. Oh. Gary, do you smell stuff? Gary uses um, expensive hair products. <laughs> yes, what I do you do. use? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't use anything that special. But... Teagy. Is it Teagy? Cat Redkin. Oh, Redkin's <laughs> fancy. He uses one expensive product. It came up on another episode. Short, sexy hair. <laughs> I, that's why you're hesitant to say it. Well, it works for you. Do yeah. you smell your stuff before you buy it? Not gel, but like body wash or shampoo, definitely. Okay. In fact, I, I yeah, I'll sit there and smell all of them mm-hmm. to make sure I've made the right choice. You have to because you're committing. It's like this is my smell. That thing. Yeah, yeah, this is what I will smell like. Like especially yeah. for body wash, I take that seriously. Dude, yeah. yeah. It's Wait, because like, it's a huge amount of it. You can't yeah. just buy a little thing of body wash. Does do you guys both use body wash? I just use soap. I use both. I use both. What do Soap you- is a primary cleansing layer, and then you body wash it to give a nice smell. Double layer. Really? Mm-hmm. Is that how you do it, Gary? I've done that before, yeah. Do you got, and do you guys have a puff that you put your body wash on? No. Come on. What are you, bougie? That's so bougie. I, I don't have you a puff. No, oh, hell no. But I have been uh, just read the riot act from friends who feel like I should be using a puff to exfoliate. And I don't Dude. even exfoliate. Oh, I don't There's do that. a layer of dead skin all over my <laughs> live skin. You know, my friend Trina insisted on using like a washcloth. Mm. Like when she came <gasps> over, she's like, "Can I?" I'm like, mm, "What?" That's come, up, that's come up on this show. I don't use a washcloth. Who's, what are you, 80 years old? Nobody uses washcloth. Black people do. Oh, <laughs> Is that right? Some of my black fans have told me they always use a washcloth. Okay. And evidently, they're like, "What? Don't you get dookie under your fingernails?" And I was like, "That is, I." The, oh, I love it. My butt is cleaner than that when I'm in the shower. I don't just, I don't just go straight from the toilet to the shower. I do. Oh my god! I just started doing that. Wait, no wiping. No. Here. Well, sometimes here. Okay, this is really. Yeah. TMI. This is good. Here it comes for this show. This morning, it just happened. Oh, wow. Sometimes I take a messy dude. <laughs> it's a messy brown, and I know that this wiping ah. is going on too much. Ad, yeah, ad uh-huh. infinitum is that the Latin for for um, to go on yeah. ad nauseum, whatever right. it is. I can't waste a, half a roll no. on this one, and it probably thing. chafes at a certain point. It hurts. Yes. It makes your bunghole red and chafy. Mm. So I just give up after a couple of wipes. I go, you know what? It's not going to happen. And then I just strip down and I I go into the shower. You don't do. What do you do when it's a never ending wiping? Because sometimes it is never ending, and then all day there's residuals. I'm, I'm thankful that it's been a while since I've experienced that awful, awfulness. But I believe there are products, there are special pre-moistened wipes and things like that mm. that some people use all the time. They mess up your plumbing. They'll mess up your plumbing. I'm telling really? you, they, they don't won't use screw them, your so. plumbing up. Don't do but it. But it's not like a douche or something. Not a douche. <laughs> no, no. My uh, my my father-in-law, Top Dog, uses Clorox. There's a lot going on in that sentence. Yeah, they call him Top Dog. Okay. He's a Marine. He's a former Marine. Gotcha. A Marine washes his butt with Clorox? That makes so much sense, he, and yet it sounds really painful and it, awful. It doesn't hurt him. He says that it keeps it real fresh and clean. Clorox. So. That's bleach. I <laughs> know. He's bleaching his asshole. I know. Don't his pants, doesn't he have like a circle of white on all his pants? No. I don't know. i got to investigate further this Christmas. I'll ask him. (laughs) 
Okay. Uh, degenerate gambler. When walking past people on crutches, old people using canes, etc., I start walking slower so it doesn't seem like I'm showing off. <laughs> I don't actually do that. That's ridiculous. I've never thought about that. I don't stare I, at people in wheelchairs. I feel like it's rude to – so I, con- I yeah. consciously go, I'm not going to stare at – or, or little people. I don't stare at mm-hmm. them – because I have I have Brad Williams. He's a comic. Yes, I I, I know him. He's funny. Yeah, he's great. Mm-hmm. And I've had long conversations with him about that. So I don't stare at them because it's I know they don't like that. Right. What do you do? You do that? Do I stare at at what this guy's are, saying though? No, I don't. I don't slow down. You showing off with your working with legs. my able body. I know. Um, Gary, do you do that? No, I definitely don't. Okay. Serpenter says. Skip the trip to the kitchen at work just to avoid uh, yep. conversation with people there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I do all sorts of weird stuff to avoid. Like, I'll do a whole different uh, route at the grocery store if there's someone I know on an aisle, in an aisle. Oh, easy. Yeah. Uh, I don't uh, – my, if my neighbor is out there, I won't check the mail. Yes. I won't – I avoid contact constantly. Okay. How do you feel about that? Because I do too and I don't feel good about it. It's something wrong with us. It's not normal. Is that true, though? Yeah. That's, that's a real just me or everyone, actually. Uh, how, the degree to which we're antisocial, is that weird? Oh, I'm totally antisocial. Yeah. I'm a lone wolf. Me too. Yeah. I really don't like. But then I have a conversation. I'm like, I feel better. I should yes. do that more often. Me too. But I'm constantly avoid it, it. My first, I default into avoidance. Do you know why? Here's what I think we do. It's because maybe as a child, your interactions with people, if they were, like, you didn't know where it was going to go, if it went yeah, crazy. Yeah, boundary issues and things. Word. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Because you exactly. don't know where, what they're, what they're going to say to you. Right. They're going to confront you on something. Yes. That's the fear. Exactly. They're going to invite you somewhere. Oh, <laughs> that's, come on over. But see, okay, like, that's ah. actually something I really wish I had was that ability to be nimble and social and to realize I can be in a conversation with someone and they can say something and I will be able to navigate or I'll be able to negotiate whatever it is in the moment and if I have to say no, that's fine. If I say yes, if I have to say I have to think about it, all of that will be okay. But I'm – because I think that's how the person who's well-adjusted mm. addresses that kind of situation. It's like, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the phone or I will talk to them and if they – and if something oh. comes up, I'll just deal with it. Oh, no, no. I don't I'm, answer phone calls ever. Yeah. I never answer the phone. I, I have anxiety around phone calls. I hate talking on the phone. The, me too. Now, do you think that? But part do you think a part of us being performers though is that it's a way to interact where we're safe? Um, what do you mean the? Well, it's this heightened sort of interaction with people, but it's in oh, a, yeah. it's in a like safe space. Even yes. though, like to the to someone who has stage fright, it would appear that what we're doing is really scary. Right. But to us, it's safer than the kind of interaction where you have no idea where it's going to go. Yeah, it's it's a form of intimacy that's not intimate. Yeah. I don't have to really know you. I can like kind of know you on my terms. Right. Yeah. That I don't cool. like it. I hate the phone. I hate texting. I don't like it. Yeah. Twitter? Forget oh, about it. Oh, wait, it, I, wait. I like texting and Twitter. I don't like the phone, though. I like Twitter. Because I, I don't like the negative energy sometimes. Yeah. Like, even if you say something as a joke, and then someone will try to jokey joke back, and they don't do it right, mm. and it reads as an insult to you, yes. and you're like, oh, man, man. Yeah. You get upset too fast. Yeah. Yeah. That's a segment we do on the show. But we're doing Just Me Everyone right now. Sorry, sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, kinetic by night. I am constantly yawning in the shower, no matter how tired I may or may not be. Uh, this is making me yawn. Read it. I think it has something to do with steam. Um... Uh, yeah. I I don't do that, but um, I've seen dogs that yawn constantly. Really? Mm-hmm. I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I love it dogs. Was, yeah. Doing oh, me anything. too. It's my favorite. Thing. Do you have a dog? Dude, I wish. No. I don't either, but. I got the fever real bad, though. I want a puppy real bad. Me too. Mm. Do you, are you on Instagram? Yeah. Do are you, do you follow, follow puppies yes! on Instagram? I feel like all I do is just <laughs> like so Puppy Palace and Daily Puppy. Puppy Palace, I don't have that. You Wait. follow them. It's cute puppies. I have puppies of Instagram. Puppies Instagram. I don't called. follow that one, but I see that hashtag sometimes. Yeah, and there's Smokin' Boo, who's an English bulldog. I follow him. It's just pictures of him. My boyfriend loves bulldogs. I don't love them as much. <laughs> but I love cute things. Yeah. There's a baby koala that i saw earlier oh my god okay <laughs> crap dude what the fuck every time i put change in a vending machine i insert them according to the de- denomination highest to lowest i don't do that i just put it in willy-nilly uh i didn't change the vending machine no that's retarded no who does that 
That's crazy. That guy does. No, that's Gary too much. Do it either. Okay. Too much. Patrick S. Brown. I forget I can be seen when I have sunglasses, headphones in. All the time. I fart all the time with my headphones in. <laughs> if I'm on a treadmill or I'm walking, I'm like, I can fart because I'm wearing my headphones all the time. I, uh, I have done that before, but I don't regularly do it. Gary? No, I don't. I, I do always wear my sunglasses, though, because they're prescription, so I'll frequently realize I've been walking around the supermarket for 30 minutes with my sunglasses on like a dick. <laughs> oh, that is dicky. I don't even so I don't elitist. wear sunglasses in the sun even because I like if I have sunglasses on and then I'm talking to someone I have to lift them up. Mm. I have some need for them to see my eyes. I do eyes. that too. I believe it's rude to talk to somebody with sunglasses. Yeah, I on. think because when I'm talking to someone with sunglasses on, I'm like I can't see well, your eyeballs. I'm a dick then. <laughs> well, you keep I've them never, on? but I've never gone grocery shopping with me, you. It, well, it, it, if I have my sunglasses on, they stay on. It just gives me a headache to take them off unless I have my reading glasses like readily available. I think that's okay. okay. That's the more normal. Except that I can't. Yeah. Except that no one knows that. How long have we been friends? And you didn't. You didn't. I don't know if you even knew that. So like, how I didn't many know com- that. So how many conversations have I had with you where you thought I was just being disrespectful? I don't think I've ever. <laughs> Be I don't, honest, Alice. But no, I see. But I worry I about it. I'm not. I'm you not know what? Asking we don't. You. I'm just we don't have outside phone. We don't have outside conversations. That's, that's why. True. We've I'm just never more been asking in a like sunglasses a environment. General really? hypothetical. Like I think about the fact that there are several people out there who probably think I'm a dick because I always keep my sunglasses on, but. Well, I hope they listen to this episode. Yeah. Matt, you never curse. Oh, I do, though. Really? Do I just not hear it because I'm such a foul mouth? Maybe, yeah. I think I've said said some curse words. F-bombs? Does your audience get real mad at that? You know what? They used to, but not anymore. I think they accept it now. My audience back in... Like the sort of the red eye... uh, I used to do the show on Ustream. Back then, it was... um, they wanted me to be more uh, innocent, I think. But now they accept that I say fuck and that Dude, I talk about poo and stuff. I was going to plug my podcast. I want you to. But because we say F and S and we talk about pooing and awful things. No, Listen, I, please. No, I, if, we talked about we talk about all sorts of gross things on this well, podcast. Well, I just want to invite your listeners. If you guys think I'm okay, listen to uh, my podcast with my husband, Call Your Mom's House. Listen to episode 81 with Ian Bag. Oh, he's funny. He's the greatest. Yes, I like and him. And it's so indicative of how it normally is. If you want to pick one episode, do that. The Roseanne Barr episode we just dropped to. Oh, it'll be like in the future when It will happens. be, but they can listen to the hits. Or episode 79 with Tom's sister, Maria. Or just episode. subscribe. Or just subscribe. I would want that, right? Peep it out. If you, you know, you like it, you like to keep it real, we keep it real. It's really fun. It's a silly show. I enjoy it. Yeah. All right, Matt Cortez. When listening to a podcast or radio show and I hear a caller with my name, I hope it's me, <laughs> even though I didn't call. I can relate to that. I totally. Yeah. I, I like I've never actually thought that, but I but I can imagine myself thinking that. Yeah. Okay. That's silly. I like it. Surf Kirchy. I'm sorry. I think I mangled your Surf name. Kirchy. Never lick envelopes because of that roach egg in the tongue <gasps> story. I've never heard that. I That's disgusting, that. but now I'll be afraid of that. I don't like to lick envelopes, though, because oh. they're disgusting. I tasting. agree. Yeah. I don't do it either. Gary, roach egg tongue. Do you know Do you know about this story? No, and I won't be finding out. Yeah. bet you I'm the only one who can say that in this conversation. <laughs> well, you think we're all going to go home and Google it? I think you will. I won't. Really? There's certain things I know better than to Google. That's surprising. Yeah, I have self-control in that way. Like, there's a fair amount of, you know, we talked about it with um, with Kevin Pereira, that sort of how people oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. get decent. Like, there's certain things that I just won't watch that everyone else has seen. Yeah, but that, well, okay, the reason that I said this, and I'm, maybe I'm being defensive, but that seems more like something that you know is deliberately gross for no other reason, whereas this this could be a thing that you have to be looking out for. Oh, no. That was why I right, made okay. the assumption. Yes, right. Like, no, I believe this to be bullshit. Oh, okay. Because with Kevin Pereira, we were talking about, like, scatting and, like, weird, just yes. fucking awful Scat? shit. Weird. Yeah, weird. Or, like, goatsy. Yeah, just, like... Wait, what? Goatsy is an internet meme. It's photos of people spreading their butt cheeks. <laughs> I love that. Um, have you guys seen the video of the guy with the plastic underwear and he shits in it? No, I have not. I'll send it to you later. It's See, a real treat. Okay. It's called sack lunch. Well, I, call I haven't. It sack lunch. I haven't seen two girls one copy there, and I don't Whoa, want. Don't do that's, it. No, that's what I'm saying. Like there's certain things I know that I don't want to see, you don't or know anything it. cruel or involving violence or death. I don't. I like don't to like see. the death stuff. I, I also won't don't. Do it. I also don't like horror movies. I can't handle them. I scare uh, very easily. I do too. I don't like it either. I don't like. I believe in ghosts and stuff. So when I start watching that, I get all paranoid and I can't sleep at night. I'm afraid of ghosts. In my own house. Like you really believe that. <laughs> 
that Sometimes, there are ghosts and things. If I watch Long Island Medium before I go to bed, forget about it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to think about it the whole Wait, night. what's your favorite crappy TV show that you watch? Uh, I like Long Island Medium. I like flipping out. <gasps> Gigolos. Jay Moore was just talking about what? Gigolos. Yeah, he's like, he couldn't believe that I don't watch it. It's the best show. I need to start watching Dude, this show. Dude, we're going to have Brace on who's one of the best gigolos. He's going to be on our podcast tomorrow. Wow. Brace, gigolo. Look him up. He's... Have you seen him have sex on TV? Yeah. That's, so that's, this, that's what the show's like. Yes, it is. And it's, it's all authentic. Like, you think male gigolos are all gay, and they're not. Like, they actually service real women. And gigolo, oh, he also masturbated on TV, Brace. It was Ew. really crazy, yeah. Well, how'd you score him? <sighs> Wait, I started tweeting at him, and then we got our listeners on him. Mm. We made all the mommies... Uh, tweet brace until he just broke down <laughs> and then I emailed him and we got him on the phone he's fantastic you, you really gotta watch I need show. to watch this it's show. fantastic every time I hear jiggle you know what's awful every time I hear the word gigolo <laughs> the actual word gigolo is not what I think I just think juggalo juggalo what's insane, a juggalo an insane clown posse fan oh yeah all right I think we have time for a very quick just hey go fuck yourself oh okay I, I now see last night we recorded and it was just like a a volc- an avalanche or a volcano of hey go fuck yourselves mm. and I should have thought to save some of them mm-hmm. for a w- this week of recording but instead I just like all of them came out so uh, I don't have a lot of uh, anger and um, hey go fuck yourself nif- selfness left inside but I managed to find one tweet that um, I didn't appreciate okay. okay. So, do you wait? Do you get told to kill yourself a lot? I get that every now and then. I don't get that one. Okay, uh, that's a death threat. Really, yes, it should be illegal. But yes, yeah. yeah, no. I really only have gotten a small handful of ones where I thought this is uh, actually, you know, a threat. Mm. But usually, I get a lot of jerks. This one is not even that jerky. This okay. is really, I'm really stretching the the bounds of this segment. Um, okay, so I tweeted brand new episode of my podcast with Jay Moore. Please. Love it, me. And then he wrote, can't you get your own guess? Hashtag no hand-me-downs. Hmm. Uh, and I was, like, wanting to write something back, but then I didn't know what to say. And how do I feel why, about this? Why would you tweet that to someone? That's always my question is what's the motive? What's right. he hope? He's hoping to elicit a negative response from you, right? Yes, which is why I'm not going to give it never, to him. Never, never yeah. answer them. Never. I've had to learn that the hard way. Why? <laughs> because, well, because I, I, I get, like, too often I get drawn into it where I will write something back. And it's like, I just wasted my time writing back to someone who had three followers. Oh, don't, yeah. That, yeah. But that's why he's baiting you, because he's only got three followers and his picture's an egg. Right. He's not a real person. He's, this one actually is a real person. But, um, it, well, it, it just annoys me because it's like, yes, we had... Jay on the Adam Carolla show, but my episode with Jay is very like every episode that's been on every person who's been on the Adam Carolla show that I've had on my show. Some of them, first of all, I recorded first, and mm. but it airs later, so they don't know, right? But also, it's not at all, it's like it, to a person, it is not the same interview no. at all. So that's why I say, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Go get him, Allison. Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> it does. You just crossed the line. Hey. Hey. That felt hey, good, right? Go fuck yourself. It always feels good. See? That's why you got to keep doing it. I know. I mean, I who doesn't know. like that segment? Come on. You'd be crazy if you didn't like hearing Allison Rosen say, go fuck yourself to somebody. They do like it. I know. Yeah. But I don't know. I, but I feel like I have, I, I'm trying to think if I have more to say about the whole idea of guests that are on more like we're all of us who are podcasting mm-hmm. it's a kind of a small pool and yeah, yes yeah. we all get certain guests like brace has not appeared on <laughs> but we all get certain right. guests who are sort of you know that we from the outside and are exclusive to our right. podcast and then there are other guests who pop up on a lot of podcasts and there's a right. reason for it and presumably we all get something different out of them Right, like Bert Kreischer does right. everybody's, and I'll and ev- do people's, and you, I'm sure, do. We are uh, all yeah. in the same thing. And Jay exactly. Moore does more than just the Corolla show and right. your show. He does his own show. <laughs> and he had Adam on, and he just wrote to me today, and he wants to have me on, which is exciting to me. That's awesome. So, yeah. So, and, and people who are fans and who like to listen like to listen to all of it because right. they're getting something different out of it with each episode. Right. 
Oh, I'm so glad I told that person to go fuck themselves. Yeah. Well, Christina, thank you so much. Aww, this has been me. very fun. Um, people can find your podcast, Your Mom's House, on iTunes, or they can go to your website, right? Which is oh, uh, well, there's yeah, Your Mom's House Podcast dot com and Christina Comedy dot com for my dates and videos, and you can check me out and if you like me, come see me. I tour constantly. And if they, I know you don't love Twitter, but if they want to follow you on Twitter, <laughs> you can follow me at Christina P. With a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. All right. And you can follow me on Twitter at Allison Rosen. You can follow the show's Twitter feed at A-R-I-Y-N-B-F. You can follow Gary at G. Patrick Smith. If you want to email the show, A-R-I-Y-N-B-F at AdamCarolla.com. And if you're going to buy something on Amazon, which you are because they have everything, uh, why not click through the banner on my website, AllisonRosen.com, and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps the show out. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> Oh, and also I wanted to remind you um, to check out a special bonus premium episode of Allison Rosen is Your New Best Friend. Uh, it's the live show that I did at the L.A. Podcast Festival with guests Doug Benson and Greg Proops, and that is for sale in the comedy album section of iTunes. It's $1.99, um, and God willing, it will be available by the time you hear this. It should have been available for, for a while by the time you hear this, but... <laughs> Gary is shaking his wow, head at me. What was that? What's going on, Gary? Very dismissive. You don't think we should reveal that we're waiting for for the iTunes store to make us go live? No. Why? Because it will have been live for weeks at this point. We don't know that for sure. Okay. Wow. I feel Uh-oh. like mom and dad are fighting. I I do too. I like it. <laughs> Conflict. <laughs> All right, you guys. I love you, and I will talk to you next week. Meow. Well, thank you for having thank me. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. awesome. Meow. Bye. Hey, do you know about the Allison Rosen Show? We had a good time, but now we got to go. Thank you for choosing the Allison Rosen Show. Digital.